I definitely didn't grow up thinking I would be a journalist. It's something that I kind of fell into. Upon graduation, I was like, I don't know what I want to do with my life, but I know that I like writing and I have a curiosity about the world. And so journalism felt like the natural thing to do. My name is Pasant Matar. I'm a CBC radio producer and I produce a show called The Current. At first, the work was very slim. I'd get work for a day and then nothing again for a few weeks and then nothing for a few months. But I basically just kept saying yes to opportunities. If someone called and said, can you come in at four o'clock in the morning? I was like, oh, absolutely, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> it was 2011 and it was the thick of the Egyptian revolution. I remember coming to work that day and saying, I think we should do something on this. I have a feeling this is gonna be big. I'm from Egypt, and so it was a story that was very close to my heart, and they were just like, okay, well, if you can find someone to interview in Egypt, we'll do it. But it didn't feel like very much of a high priority. I ended up connecting with this journalist that I'd spoken to on Twitter the night before, and he ended up doing such a good job illustrating the scale and the scope of what was happening in my country. People came up to me after the interview was over and said, you know, I feel like you should be somewhere else in the building. Maybe you should be in radio. I started working with them the next week, and what was supposed to be two weeks has now turned into about five years. Every day we meet and we come up with pitches of the stories that we think we should do on the air the next day. For me, I find that I get a lot of my story ideas, not necessarily from mainstream newspapers and news channels, but through what people are talking about on social media. I find myself gravitating towards stories that are either not getting told or getting told from a certain perspective and there's another perspective that isn't really being heard from. That to me ends up being a lot of stories on race, identity politics, feminism, violence against women, pop culture as well. And so for me what I love is being able to pitch a story about something that I really care about and that I know that so many other people care about and then be able to take that to an audience that may not be having that conversation themselves at home or with their own friends and family. Then have that conversation on a national platform and have two and a half million people in Canada listen to that. It's a very rewarding thing. I was born in Egypt and I came to Canada when I was three and then me and my family we left again when I was nine and moved to the Middle East and then I came back to school to go to UTM. One thing that really stood out to me in terms of being at UTM was just how accepting everyone was. Growing up in different places, it felt like you had to identify in very limited ways and you couldn't be many things at once. But UTM to me was the beginning of seeing the unparalleled level of acceptance that we see just generally in the GTA as well. And that has been very formative in terms of why I gravitate towards the stories and the work that I do. I think if there was one thing that I would tell an incoming UTM student is not to forget that there's a world outside of your classroom walls and that the GPA isn't everything. When I think back to my UTM days, I don't think of my in-classroom experiences and the essays that I wrote. I think of the connections and the conversations and the activities that I did outside of the classroom that really helped form where my priorities are today. Steep yourself in the world outside of the classroom and enrich yourself with activities and clubs and learn from the people around you.